Good evening. Can you hear me way in the back today? Good? Okay. Today we're going to uh, back to the Panama Canal for part two of my, my lecture. Before I do that, uh, in yesterday's talk, I started out by saying that I had a four-year-old at home, and all of you thought something strange. Uh, in actuality, I have two-year-old twins at home. And uh, so there's Bam Bam, and there's Trouble. Uh, we have lots of cats uh, at our house and at our ranch, but those are the two uh, best ones, nicest ones that I, that I think I've ever had. Um, this lecture today is going to be in two parts. The first part is what we're going to see as we go through the canal, and the second part will be the new locks and a little bit about the costs of going through the canal, things like that. But uh, first we're going to start out with what we're going to see as we go through. Uh, most of you probably won't see this. This is out in Limon Bay, where hopefully we will arrive uh, somewhere around 3 or 4 o'clock this morning. Uh, the pilot will come on around 5.45 when we're out in Limon Bay, and we'll start to go through somewhere around 6.30 or so. We'll start to get into the channel uh, about quarter to 7. And uh, the narration, uh, I'll be doing the narration, will start at 7 and uh, uh, it will be intermittent throughout the, the day. Uh, but uh, by 7 o'clock, we should be beginning to approach the uh, uh, Gatun locks. So we'll start out there, off to our port side, off in the distance. It'll be a fair distance away. Uh, will be the port of Cologne. Uh, it is mainly today a container port, uh, but it's be off way in the distance. Uh, these are pictures I've taken when we've docked at Cologne. Uh, we were docked at Cologne uh, 10, 11 days ago, and uh, a lot of container ships there. Uh, the first thing you may see if you get up in time and, or if you turn on the uh, bridge cam uh, before you get out around, but say 6.30 or so, you may be able to see there's a new bridge that they call the Atlantic Bridge. It was built by a French company, um, and I've gone through a number of different times in recent years. So there was the bridge beginning to be constructed, and there it's a little bit uh, farther finished, and almost finished, and almost finished. It's a cable stay bridge, and it's a single cable stay. It's a fairly unique one. Uh, again, a French company did it. It opened about three years ago. It is the longest center span on a single cable stay bridge. Uh, there's actually four lanes of traffic with the cables down the middle of the four lanes. Uh, so we will be actually coming underneath that and, and past it. Um, this is the next thing that you need to be looking for. It'll be on the starboard side just after we go uh, through the bridge. And again, you need to be out there probably about 6.45. If you're on the starboard side, you can get out on your balcony. That's the only place where you'll see anything that was done by the French. It's the one place where you can see something that was done by the French. And then we will proceeding towards the Gatun locks. And this ought to be about uh, 6.45, maybe 7 o'clock. These times are always approximate because they will be uh, subject to how much traffic there is and weather and things like that. But we should be approaching the Katoon locks somewhere a little bit before 7 o'clock, and that's when we'll, we'll start the narration. Um, one thing I want to point out is that if you're on the, the port side, as we approach the Katoon locks, you might want to look to the left-hand side uh, to perhaps see some crocodiles, or at least one crocodile. And there's a picture I took, I think, uh, uh, in December. And uh, if you can't spot it, there's one crocodile there, there's the other one there. Here's a close-up on the one. These are not Walt Disney uh, stuffed animals. These are live crocodiles. And uh, this one was a little bit farther along, a little bit closer to the, the locks. This is a picture from I think February, and there he is. Uh, now, when we went through 10 days ago, we went up to Gatun Locks, turned around in the lake, and came back out. Richard and I were on the bridge, and uh, when, we, when we went in the morning, we didn't see anything. We were focused right into the sun. It was kind of difficult to see off where the crocs were. And uh, when we were coming back out, I said, you know, let's really look now because the light is real good. And uh, we had a big pair of binoculars. We were looking, 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 and Richard was saying, can't see anything. And I said, I've got it. I could point out exactly where he was, and uh, Richard saw it. Richard was thrilled. He saw a crocodile. Um, 
So then we'll be approaching the locks and uh, it makes a difference which of the two lanes we go. The one on the left is the east lane, the one on the right is the west lane, and we won't know which one we'll do until we actually are getting there. Uh, if we're going through the west lane, those of you who have a balcony on the starboard side are going to get a nice view. If, you're on, if we're going on the east lane on the right-hand side, or excuse me, the west lane on the right-hand side here, it'll be the people on the port side that get maybe a little bit better view. Uh, something else I want to point out here, uh, there used to be a bridge that was uh, the only bridge on the Caribbean side. It's a swing bridge and you have to look for it just down below the first set of uh, gates that you see there. Um, they don't use it anymore except in emergencies, uh, difficult situations or something, but they're not regularly using it uh, because of the, the new Atlantic Bridge. So focus on that. Something else I want to point out, uh, say right here, um, use this slide for, to point that out. Um, people have asked me where is the best place to um, see the transit that we're going to do. And I have to tell you, the best place is this view from the bridge. <laughs> that's, that's Richard and me. Uh, okay. Anything that looks forward, uh, the Explorer's Lounge or even in the, the deck above that uh, uh, is good. Uh, your, just your balcony is going to be good in many cases. I do suggest that at least one of the times we're in one of the locks, and we'll go through three locks here at the Gatun side. On the other side, we'll go through one lock at Pedro Miguel and two locks at Miraflores. For one of those transits of one of the locks, go down on deck two when we're down low and that sensation of rising up and you're looking at the wall that is just going to be seven feet away from you is something that you want to do. So, uh, and even a couple of places, it'd be good to go in the back. Uh, if you're looking back at the, uh, for example, the, the bridge that we just saw, that was a picture that I took looking backwards. Uh, so that's always good. So don't stick in one spot. Uh, look around a variety of places. Um, we will have uh, two pilots on board. Uh, the guy there in black is one of them. This is a picture from 10 days ago. Uh, and uh, the pilot is in charge. He tells the captain what to do. Many places where you're going through a lock, the pilot is advising you, or you're going into a harbor, the pilot is advising. In the Panama Canal, the pilot is in charge. Uh, look ahead as we come up to the locks. Uh, on the center island between the two uh, channels, you'll see some guys with a rowboat. And you'd think there'd be some fancy way of getting lines from the ship to the, the uh, side of the canal. Uh, what they have found is there's nothing better than using a rowboat. They throw some lines like these two guys there on the left. They'll throw lines down. They'll pass the guys in the rowboat, pass the lines up to the uh, men that have the lines from the, from the side of the canal. And uh, then they hook together. But that's still the most efficient way of doing it. Um, I'm not sure if this little video will play. Probably not. Uh, okay, that was going to show you how to go through a, a lock, and it's, uh, we're having some trouble with my videos. Uh, here we're coming into the Gatun locks. The mule there is going to be next to us. In fact, there will be two in front on each side and one in the back. So we'll be using a total of six mules. The mules are not towing us through the lock. Uh, a lot of people think the mule is towing. It's not. All the mules are doing is keeping us centered in the lock. And that's not a real big problem for this ship. Uh, this ship uh, is about, I think, 104 feet wide. Uh, the locks are 110 feet wide. So we've got roughly seven feet on each side. Uh, but uh, on bigger ships, that'll be a problem. I'll point that out uh, a little bit later. Uh, it's always fun to look at other ships. Hopefully there'll be somebody next to us when we're going through. Uh, this guy is going to sink because he's going down, he's going out. Most of the time, the, the, uh, when we're going through, ships will be going in the same direction in the other lane. They go for about six hours, and just if we catch it right when they're making a switch from one direction to the other, will you see somebody going the opposite direction. But it's always fun to see the ships in the locks with you, uh, a lot of container ships. That's the, uh, the uh, control building. It's in the, uh, on the center island. And once we pass through the Gatun locks, um, we will be out in Gatun Lake, which 
uh, was created by Gatun Dam. That's over here on the right-hand side. It's actually about a mile and a half long, uh, something like uh, 90, 95 feet high. Uh, it, uh, at the time it was opened, in, when the canal opened in, in 1914, this was the, the biggest dam anywhere in the world. Uh, today there's many, many dams that are bigger than it. But uh, uh, you'll see that off on the right-hand side, and that's what's damming up the Chagres River, which creates uh, Gatun Lake. Uh, then we'll be out in the lake, and when we get out into the lake, uh, Richard and I will go find breakfast or something. Uh, we'll be out in the lake for probably almost two hours, and for at least the first portion of that, uh, there'll be no narration. We'll just uh, uh, let you uh, go along. Um, some places you'll see islands that are very close to us. Actually, I took this one from a small boat, but uh, uh, some places you'll have uh, an island that is fairly close. I said that uh, we'll go up 85 feet, and, and you maybe have heard that, uh, uh, that the lake is at 85 feet. Not necessarily. Uh, I took this off the web yesterday, March 27th, and yesterday the lake was at 84.9 feet, and it gradually goes down. Over here on the far right side is the end of May, and by the end of May, it'll be under 83 feet. If it goes under 83 feet, um, they have restrictions so that some ships will not be able to carry their full cargo through. Uh, they, the, the ships will be too uh, deep, their draft will be too uh, low to, to get through. But uh, it goes down. Um, when we went through 10 days ago, it was about 85.5. So it goes down fairly regularly. This is uh, month by month. And you can see that in January and December, it's above 87 feet. 87 feet, uh, water is spilling over the dam, uh, goes over the spillway. Uh, eight, below 83 feet, there are problems with the, the level of the lake. Uh, but clearly May and uh, uh, April, May, June is the dry season. The lake level is going down. So every day now it will be a little bit lower, a little bit lower. But every place you read it says the lake is at 85 feet. No, it isn't. It's somewhere between 83 and 87. When it's low, and this is a picture taken when it was low, the stumps of trees that were there when the lake was first filled will stick up. And here we're a little bit closer to some of the land. And that isn't an alligator or crocodile. Uh, this area, uh, Central America, it's all crocodiles. Alligators are in Florida. This is a caiman. A caiman is smaller. It's usually no more than five feet. But that was a caiman that was on the bank. And can anybody see anything there? There is a howler monkey there. And again, I took this from a small boat rather than from the ship. But you may be able to see birds and a few other things. The one place where you might see a crocodile is before we get into the Gatun Dam. Then we'll be going crossing the lake. Uh, again, a couple hours. Uh, uh, you'll see lots of other different types of ships. A lot of container ships these days. We'll also see dredges, particularly when we begin to get in the narrower parts of the canal. A uh, number of different kinds of dredges. This one was a scooper dredge. He was putting uh, stuff from the bottom into uh, a barge there to be taken away. Um, they're constantly dredging the channel. There is stuff slumping in from the sides all the time, so they have to constantly be dredging. And the places where the dredges are operating from is called Gamboa. Gamboa is at about the halfway point and when we get near Gamboa, uh, we'll be back up on the, the uh, uh, bridge uh, narrating again. Um, on the left-hand side there, you see something that is called Titan. Uh, that's a huge crane. Uh, it was actually made in Germany in the late 1930s. It was one of four identical cranes built in Germany. Uh, during the Second World War, one was destroyed. The Russians grabbed one, the British grabbed one, and the U.S. grabbed one. Uh, Supposedly, the one from Russia got something happened to it. Nobody knew where it was, although it has been reported that somebody now knows where it is, so it's, it's still there in Russia. The British one was put on a barge to be taken to England, and unfortunately, uh, it fell off the barge and is someplace in the North Sea. The one for the United States went to uh, the Long Beach shipyard, the Navy shipyard in Long Beach, and uh, about, I think, 20 years ago, uh, they declared it surplus. The Panama Canal uh, people bought it for a dollar, 
and then spent more than a million dollars to bring it down to Panama and rebuild it, uh, and uh, it is still there. They use it to uh, work on the, the gates. There's also there on the right to center there uh, a, a barge that is used to drill holes in the bottom of the canal uh, for blasting. There's a closer view of the barge for blasting. There's again uh, our Titan. I'll show you Titan again. Uh, this will be the place where we see the Chagres River, and that's right after Gamboa. Um, the Chagres River is the main water supply for the lake, and it's actually, uh, uh, there's another dam, the Madden Dam, up the river. You usually can look up the river a ways. Uh, there's a couple spots where, you, if you're lucky, you kind of see up the river, not quite all the way to where the dam is. But again, that's the major supply of water for the, the lake and for the canal. Um, at several places along the way, we'll probably see the Panama uh, Railroad. Um, the Canal Railroad is actually run by the Southern Railroad uh, from the United States. It, it used to be private uh, operation, but now it's uh, owned by Southern uh, Railroad. And what they're doing more than anything is shoveling uh, containers from one side to the other. So containers will be dropped off on the Pacific side and taken over to Cologne and reloaded onto ships. They do that, uh, uh, some ships will come in with containers that will actually end up going five or six different directions from Cologne. Other times a ship will come in to uh, the Pacific side and will be too big to go through the canal for the, the depth uh, uh, draft and they have to unload some. But you'll see lots of uh, containers if we happen to see a train going by. And there's a couple spots where we might see that. This is the terminal for loading the containers onto the railroad cars on the uh, Pacific side. Uh, then we'll get into the narrow part of the canal. This is getting into the place where the canal is cutting through the continental di uh, uh, divide. Uh, the Panamanians today call it the Culebras Cut. It's where Culebras, a town called Culebras, was. Uh, the Americans, and I, I'm, I first went to the canal in, in 1969, and so I still think about it in the, the old names. Uh, it's, uh, in my mind, it's always the Gallard Cut. Gaillard was a colonel in the Army Corps of Engineers who ran the center part of the excavations of construction of the canal, this area. And unfortunately, before the canal was finished, he had to go back to the United States with a brain tumor. And in fact, he died before the canal was actually opened. So in honor of him, uh, they, they named this section the Gaillard Cut. But you'll hear people talking about it as the Calabrus Cut as well. And it's the narrowest part of the canal. Uh, in some sections, there will be two-way traffic. In the Calabrus Cut or Gaillard Cut, it's one-way traffic. It's, it's too narrow. And you'll see slumping in a number of different places. There still are landslides uh, all the time in this, this area. And then this is the place where we're going through the, literally the Continental Divide. The hill on the right-hand side is usually called Gold Hill. Um, when the French were constructing the canal, when they were trying to get people to invest in it, they said that this hill contained gold. And so not only would they build a canal, but they would mine gold. It doesn't have any gold, but that's the name that it's been given. And you can see here that they've had to cut back, continually widen the canal and have these slopes that uh, are terraced. They, they keep slumping. Uh, I mentioned yesterday, right in this area, there was a slump in 1915, uh, about a year after the canal opened. Uh, a large uh, landslide came down and blocked the canal for almost seven months. So there's Gold Hill and this narrow part of the canal. Then we'll pass the second bridge. This is usually called the Centennial Bridge. Uh, it was supposed to be done in time for the 100th anniversary of the independence of Panama in 1904. Uh, didn't make it. It wasn't finished until 1905. But uh, they say it's the centennial of the, the uh, uh, Panamanian independence. It also is a single uh, uh, strand uh, cable stay bridge. We'll go through that one and then we'll be coming into the San, uh, Pedro Miguel locks. And uh, at that point, just before we get to the Pedro Miguel locks, there's a split in the canal. One line goes off to the right and that will go into the new locks at Coco Lee. Uh, off to the left uh, will be the ones that we'll be using going into the original locks. So this ship is just starting to go into the, the, uh, the uh, new canal. Uh, and for a while, that uh, uh, line or that, that channel that the uh, 
ships that are going to the Coco Lee Locks, it's, it's almost three miles long, uh, they will be about 15 feet higher than us. It's always fun to see a ship go through there if we, we catch one uh, and there's a ship going along higher than we are. And this is coming into the Pedro Miguel Locks. And here's the Pedro Miguel Locks. And uh, I've done this several times on ships that were in the two and 3,000 passenger range that are what are called Panamax ships. That is to say they're the maximum size that could go through the old locks. And they would have perhaps uh, a foot or a foot and a half on each side as they go through the locks. So it was always fun to look down. We're not going to be that tight. We have over seven feet, seven and a half feet on each side. But it's fun to be able to look down and see how close you are. This guy was a pilot and was on one of the big ships, and this is from, I think, about eight, eight or ten years ago. Uh, I was talking with him for almost an hour. He was kind of a neat guy. He wasn't doing too much, um, but his, his responsibility was just to watch the back end of the ship. Um, and so we had a couple of good conversations here as we went through the Pedro Miguel and Miraflores locks. Um, the interesting thing is now I was talking to Pilot uh, 10 days ago, and uh, uh, I said, do we have a third pilot or are we too small for a third pilot? And he said, no, under the current contract they eliminated third pilots, um, which he was not real happy with because in the old days they would have three pilots on the bigger ships, and that meant that there was more work, particularly for the younger guys who weren't as experienced in the Honda seniority list, and he said the younger guys aren't getting that much experience. So this is, this is actually not uh, Orion, oh, this is on another uh, company's ship, but again the guy in black there is the pilot and the other uh, guys are the officers, the, the, the uh, captain is the one with glasses there. And the pilot is telling uh, the, the mules what to do, tighten up on the front left, uh, loosen up on the front right or whatever, and you sometimes will be able to hear them doing that, um, but the mules don't radio anything back. Uh, the mules do it by bells or by uh, lights on the top. You'll see a row of lights and they acknowledge the radio communication from the pilot via uh, a bell or a, a light flashing. Um, again, this is not Orion. Uh, this was on one of the bigger ships. That's what's referred to as a Panama Canal stripe. Um, and when you have an inch or a foot or a foot and a half of clearance, oftentimes you will see a Panama stripe. Uh, I can tell you that when the ship gets to its next port, you will see guys out there with paintbrushes, and captains do not like to have their ships showing off a Panama Canal stripe. However, when we're going through the canal, particularly when we're out in Gatun Lake and you see other ships, look for the stripe. And if you see some of the bigger ships, you will probably see a Panama Canal stripe on the side of them. Again, my videos aren't playing, uh, but this was going to be one where it showed a ship getting a stripe, unfortunately. Um, Past that, we'll go through uh, a lake, the Miraflores Lake, which is a little over a mile long. Um, it's about 55, 58 feet above sea level. And uh, then we'll go into the Miraflores Locks, which are two-stage locks, two chambers uh, on each side. Uh, this is the Miraflores Locks uh, as if we were going into them from the Pacific side. So you're, you're seeing the, the chambers, and that's Miraflores Lake in the background, and the far background, the Centennial Bridge. Here's a ship coming into the locks from the uh, Pacific side. That's the control uh, building for the locks. And one time I went through and the, uh, the only lane that was open was the uh, one on the west side, but there's Titan uh, working on the gates and uh, uh, the gates were drained, uh, the, the chambers were drained. It's the only time I've ever been able to look down into the chambers. So they were totally empty. You get a sense of the scale. That uh, was looking down into the chambers. Uh, the raising and lowering of the, the ships is done totally with gravity. Uh, the water flows in. There's no pumping here. It's all done by gravity. The water comes in and raises us up uh, or lowers us down by gravity. There's our mule again. Uh, off to the side, off of beyond the port side, as we come into the Miraflores locks, you might be able to see this dam. Uh, and this is what is creating Miraflores Lake. Uh, but the water that is there behind the dam on Miraflores Lakes is Chagres River water. 
And so this is another view of that same dam. That water off in the distance is Chagres River water. The Chagres River is the only water, uh, the only river in the world that goes to two oceans because it originally went to the Caribbean, but because of this dam, some of the water will sometimes go into the Pacific. Then we'll be going past the Miraflores uh, Visitor Center. Some of you may be doing that. There is a shore excursion day after tomorrow that goes to uh, this uh, uh, visitor center as well as the one on the, Pacific, uh, the Caribbean side for the new locks. Another view of it. Notice that tower there in the background. And the important thing about uh, why I'm showing you that tower is that up on the top of that tower, there's a webcam. Now, if you've got grandkids at home, uh, I don't suggest you try to get them up at 7 in the morning to see us go through the Gatun locks. There is a webcam over there. Uh, but by the time we get over here, it'll be 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and you may be able to tell your grandkids that you could see our ship going through. Very easy to find. Just do a, a, a Google search, Panama Canal, uh, Gatun locks or Miraflores locks webcam, and it, you'll pull it up right away. And then what you want to do is you want to get out on your balcony and you want to be waving at the grandkids or whatever. No, I just lied to you. You don't want to do that. It is not a video camera. It is a still camera. It refreshes about every 15 seconds. So if you're out there waving, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, what you want to do is have something that you have, you know, an orange blanket or an orange jacket, or you want to go up on one of the decks where you can say, I'm right in the middle of the top deck or something uh, where they might be able to spot you. But uh, we'll see people from uh, on the uh, thing. They'll all be waving at us. And for some of you that are doing that shore excursion, you might be able to wave at a ship that's going by if one comes by while we're there. Then we'll leave the Miraflores locks and we'll be out into the Balboa uh, port area. This is where ships that are coming from across the Pacific and that need to unload some or that are dropping their entire cargo will be unloading. And then we go underneath something called the Thatcher Ferry Bridge or the Bridge of the Americas, has two names. Um, this is the old bridge from the Pan American Highway that connects uh, North America with uh, uh, Panama and uh, supposedly to South America, although the road doesn't go all the way to Colombia. Um, but uh, that's the Thatcher Ferry Bridge or the Bridge of the Americas. I took this picture flying out of Panama City one time and caught a nice shot of it. Or here's another view of it from down on the ground. Uh, this is an important part of the story. Uh, large, cru large cruise liners do not go the Panama Canal Transit like we're doing. Uh, they can go through the locks, they could go through the new locks, but uh, they can't go through this bridge. The bridge is too low. And unless they raise the bridge somehow or build another bridge here, it's a very, very busy bridge. It's right by Panama City. Um, but that bridge makes it impossible for the bigger cruise ships, you know, the five and 6,000 passenger things, uh, to go all the way through. They do a, what's called a partial transit, like we did here on Orion 10 days ago. Uh, you can also see on both sides uh, the remnants of what is called the Thatcher Ferry. Before they made that bridge, this was the way across. There was a little ferry here, and you'll see where the ferry docked on both sides, if you're, if you're looking uh, for that. And then we'll get some views of Panama City. It's a big, new, modern city off in the distance. That causeway there is what was constructed with the, the excess dirt that was taken out of the Calabrus Cut uh, at both ends. They, they built breakwaters. Uh, the causeway here uh, at the, the Pacific side uh, connects four little islands. There's a nice building there that you see. It's called the Bio Museo. It's on the causeway. And uh, there's the city in the background. That tallest building that you see there in the background that has the curving tower is an interesting one. It used to have the name of some guy from the United States on it and it no longer has that, that name on it. They took it off uh, a couple of years ago. I, I you know, don't want to talk about politics. But there's the Bio Museo, and here's a shot from down on the causeway. Um, and then we'll be out into the bay, and we'll swing around a little bit, and we'll be docking here. Uh, I think that's what we're going to do uh, at Amador. That's what it says on the, the program. It, says, uh, it doesn't say we're using a tender or anything. We're docking here. The only problem is that the cruise terminal is not done. 
Uh, the docks are done, but the cruise terminal is not. When I was here in February, uh, or actually December, uh, we, we came through here and we docked and stayed overnight, uh, like I think we're going to do. Uh, so what they had was a shuttle that took you from the edge of the pier. Uh, either you got your, your bus to go on your tour right on the pier, or you took a shuttle bus into a yacht club that was a mile or so away. But that's, that's the new cruise terminal that's under construction at Amador. Okay, the other half of the lecture today is on the new canal. And uh, there's only a couple of different things about the new canal. New sets of locks at both ends, uh, on the Caribbean side, the Agua Clara locks, and on the Pacific side, the Coco Lee locks. They also had to straighten and deepen sections of the canal uh, so that bigger ships could go through. Uh, they started the project in 2006. They anticipated getting it done by 2014, in, in, uh, the 100th anniversary. Uh, there was a consortium of country, companies, five different companies, one of which was an American company. All the rest were European. Um, but uh, they began construction in 2009, and it went way, way late. I don't think they finished it until 2018, uh, 2018 or 2019. The old locks were 1,000 feet long and 110 feet wide. The new locks are 1,400 feet long and eight, 180 feet wide, and they're also deeper. Um, so that's the old up in the top, the new ones on the bottom, or here the old ones on the left and the new ones on the right. Notice I put down there the old ones, the biggest ship, Panamax ship, could have 4,800 TEU whereas the new locks, in theory, 1,300 TEU, 13,000 TEU. What is a TEU? Uh, now, when they first started doing containers, uh, back about 50 years ago, the typical container was 20 feet long. And so a TEU is a 20-foot equivalent unit. Today, most containers are 40 feet, so that would be two TEU. But the capacity of ships is usually listed, the container ships is usually listed in terms of TEU. So there's a, a ship, one of the Evergreen ones, uh, Evergreen is out of Taiwan. Um, and I point this out here, where the arrow is, those are a few 20-footers. You won't see very many 20-footers 20 these days. Most everything is now 40-footers. Uh, I think everything else on that ship is 40, but there's one stack of 20s. Um, there are ships currently under construction at 24,000 TEU. The new locks max 13,000. So there are ships that are almost double the size that can go through the new locks. Now you might think, do we have to do a new new, new canal someday? Where, do, where can you possibly use a ship of 24,000 TEU? Uh, they run from China to Europe through the Suez Canal. They can go through Suez. They run from China to Long Beach or Los Angeles in California. And we've been talking recently about all the ships that are backed up at, at the Los Angeles Long Beach uh, Harbor. Part of it is it's mo not, not more ships, but each ship is carrying more cargo, more containers, and therefore takes longer to unload. And that backs things up. There are several cruise ships that are clearly too big to go through, not the new locks, but they can't go under the Bridge of the Americas. So this is the view at the Pacific side. The Miraflores locks that will be going through are there, and Pedro Miguel is up there, and the Coco Lee locks are to our port side. Uh, so as, we come through, as we come out, they'll be on the starboard side. We'll be, they'll be on our right side as we come out. Um, there is a way that uh, they have designed the new locks so that some of the water is reused. Not all the water comes out of the, the uh, last gates out into the, the ocean. Um, the old locks, it takes about 26 million gallons of water to raise a ship up and 26 million to raise it down, so roughly 52 million gallons of water. The new locks, even though they're almost 50% longer and 50% wider, they use about the same amount of water because of the water-saving uh, basins that are on the side. I have a bunch of pictures here that are showing construction. This is the Coco Lee locks on the Pacific side, the Bridge of the Americas there in the background. 
Uh, this is Coco Lee. I've taken uh, from a ship, so they're, they're close enough to see fairly easily, although I think, I think this is a telephoto shot. This is clearly a telephoto shot. But they're, they're off there. They'll be on our starboard side uh, as, after we leave the Miraflores locks. Uh, that's Coco Lee locks again. And this is on the, the uh, Gatun side, on the Caribbean side. The Gatun locks are on the right. The Agua Clara locks are off on the left-hand side. So there's Gatun and there's Agua Clara. And remember, this is where you want to look for crocodiles. The one thing to look for for the crocodiles, look for that little white lighthouse. Uh, if you can spot that lighthouse, and then you want to be looking along the shore right in the area of that lighthouse. Also on the Agua Clara locks, on the hill behind it, is where the visitor center. If you're doing that shore excursion, it's doing the locks. That's where the visitor center is. And you get a nice view looking down on the Agua Clara locks. So there's the lighthouse you want to pay attention to. Uh, there's the Agua Clara locks. Uh, when we went through um, 10 days ago, uh, this was the Emerald Princess going through the new locks. Uh, the Emerald Princess was the one that was uh, next to us uh, at the pier in Fort Lauderdale when we left Fort Lauderdale. Uh, so I'm not sure where they are now, uh, but uh, uh, they were next to us uh, 10 days ago. They only went out into the lake and did a partial transit and came back out. Uh, that's the Agua Clara locks and under construction. And here's Agua Clara under construction. The gates were made in Italy. Uh, they're a very different kind of gate. The old locks are a swing gate um, the new locks are a sliding gate, and they were brought over in uh, four at a time from uh, Italy, and then uh, they were put on uh, little transporters, and they built a road that would actually lead them up to the, the locks, and literally just drive them up. They're 11 stories high and uh, something like uh, 30 meters wide, if I remember. And then they were brought into the lock chamber and moved into position and tested. And they leaked. Uh, there are lawsuits still going on over the construction of the new locks. Uh, it was supposed to be about a $5 billion project, and uh, it was way over costs, and there are still fighting going on, uh, various courts as to who's paying how much. Uh, but that was the, the leaking. They, they actually did figure out a way to caulk those so that they're not leaking now, supposedly. Uh, there's the Agua Clara locks uh, from the air and the Gatun locks on the right-hand side. Uh, I have a friend that does the same set of lectures that I do on ships. We were one time together on a ship. Uh, he was actually on the Ruby Princess and arrived in San Francisco just uh, to morning, this morning. Uh, but he took this picture. He has a friend that is a tugboat pilot. Uh, on the canal, and so he was on a tugboat going into the new locks. Here's a ship going into the new locks, uh, Coco Lee. And then you'll see uh, as we go past, on, when we're in Miraflores Lakes, you'll see these ships go sailing along about 15 feet, 20 feet above us. This is my friend's uh, picture uh, looking up from the tugboat at the, the ship uh, above him. These are some of these huge, huge container ships that are going through the new locks or ones like this. This is liquid natural gas. There's the view from the Agua Clara locks looking down from the visitor center and you can see it's a sliding gate, uh, opens and closes. And there's a ship going through the Agua Clara locks taken from the visitor center. Now, one last thing uh, here. Uh, there is a ship, I said it was 13,000 TEU was supposedly the, the max for the new locks. Somehow, one of the Evergreen ships made it through with 14,434. That's the record for the maximum number that have gone through. Uh, big question always is, what does it cost to go through the canal? And you can go on the web and find for the Panama Canal Commission, the, the operating company, um, they have all the information in terms of uh, what it costs. And I did this for a ship with 13,000 TEU. Um, so you pay for tugboats, 
based on the number that you use. Typically, they will have one in front of us, uh, front of them and back uh, behind them as they go into the new lock. They will also use at least two to help guide them in. Sometimes they'll use four to help guide them in. So they might use four or six tugboats. Line handlers, those are the guys that are on the deck of the ship that are holding the lines. Um, they're always from the canal. So how many do you use? There's a security surcharge and an oil prevention fee and a bunch of other fees. The bank charges, the money is in the bank three days ahead. There's none of this stuff. The check is in the mail. Don't worry about it. The money is deposited electronically three days in advance. Uh, there's some other miscellaneous fees. And then there's a toll fee. And for that hypothetical 13,000 TEU ship, it would be a little over a million dollars. Now. We are not a 13,000 uh, uh, TEU uh, ship. We're a cruise ship. Um, all right, point this out here. Uh, you think, you know, that's, that's really an impressive amount. But that 13,000 TEU, if they were all 40-footers, that would re represent 6,500 40-foot containers. Each one of them might contain two or three, 400 con television sets or whatever it's in there. And if you divide the cost per TV, it's less than a dollar. Um, you know, it's, it's not that expensive if you think in terms of what's inside the container that's coming through and, and how much it's costing to get that to uh, the distribution center. Cruise ship costs, uh, it's based on size. Every ship is, when, when it's finished, uh, the tonnage of the ship is recorded, internationally available. Um, for cruise ships, it's based on the number of lower berth beds. Um, now, Every ship, when it's a cruise ship, when it's uh, finished, they count the number of lower berth beds. Um, if there is a fold-out couch or if there is a, uh, a bunk bed on the wall that folds down from the wall, and I, I've been on some like that, those don't count for lower berth beds. So lower berth beds, the number of actual passengers. Um, and uh, so sometimes you might have 2,300 lower berth beds, but you might have 2,700 uh, passengers because like kids don't count for lower berth beds. I've been on some like that. Uh, you pay for an advanced slot reservation and uh, when you look at the catalog for uh, or Viking or any other cruise company and you want to see it, uh, going through the Panama Canal, it tells you what day you're going to th go through like a year in advance. That's because they have paid for that slot reservation uh, basically a year in advance. Cruise ships always want to go through in the daytime, and the canal is 24 hours a day, although the new locks have not been run uh, lately at night. Um, but there's about 54 ships that go through, and they're going through day and night. But cruise ships always want to go through the day, so you pay extra for that. There's a new fee that uh, I didn't uh, put down here. Um, based on the, the level of the water uh, in, the, in, the, in the lake, and uh, right now that's 1.1%. Five uh, percent extra fee but beyond your toll is added on because the lake level is now below 85. Um, typical range is about uh, 250,000 up to maybe 500,000. Although some cruise ships, the real big ones that have gone through the new locks, have been over a million. Those are the ones like with five or 600 uh, passengers. Um, so. My next lecture is going to be on Wednesday, and I'm going to talk about why Costa Rica and Nicaragua are so different. Uh, kind of an interesting one, comparing two countries that are neighbors but are very, very different countries. Um, thank you for coming and having a late dinner. Hopefully there's a little bit of food left somewhere. Take care. <laughs>